when parents putting their kids in our hands. And I like to think it, that's the greatest trust. So I like to say, um, thank you for the trust. We go through a lot, but we always had you supporting us. When we go through the hard times, I always understand and sense the supporting, even a personal support. Some of you will write a note to us and tell us we can do this. And some of you coming in to say, don't worry. So I have to say that without you support, South Coast would not be the same. Thank you for the opportunity <laughs> and to coach your kids and uh, South Coast is always open to everyone who is interested and in, wants to do gymnastics, wants to have fun and uh, participate and uh, excel. I think I'm having a harder time to sending these kids go away than my own kids. And I think, you know, what it is is that they grow up with us, they actually spent more time with us in the gym doing all these years. I mean, you know, they go home, sleep, and you know, but amount of time with work together, share, you know, hard work, bonding, achieve something together, go through hard times. I think all that added together were their coaches and second parents, were their friends, you know, when they're young or babies. <laughs> I mean, we, we just, I miss them. I think that's a symbol word that I do. We do have a hard time to send them away. Um, it's it's kind of different feeling that they, uh, than I sent my own kids. My own kids, I almost feel that they're my own kids, that I probably, you know, they probably come and visit and all that, and for them, I wish, I would love, love them to come and, and visit and show us how they do. Yeah. They will all have a great future. And they all, some of them, gotten a scholarship, full rights, to schools like um, Air Force, we have Berkeley, we have um, San Jose State, we have UCLA, and we have UCI. I mean, so they're intelligent, smart, hard worker, young and beautiful. Yeah. I was looking at some of the old pictures. They were so little. And we're tall, right? I'm like, they're little. They reach our stomach. And now, my head's on their chin. I'm like, <laughs> so, so that huge difference. They're like little kids starting to having fun in this, just to have fun. Love it because they can flip, they don't, they don't understand the other points of what sports can give it to them. It's just having fun, but that's how everybody starts. It's great start, is loving to do this. And now, of course, you know, they're physically, mentally, Mature, maturity wise and they're, they know so much. We used to talk to them about the simple math. And now what they're talking about, I don't understand. I, you know, I mean, they're, they're gymnastics. They're starting to become the oldest around the gym. So of course they're leaders. They understand they have to be role models to our other young kids, young teammates, new team member. Yeah. They're part of the gym growing. They're just, they're part of it. Everything that our gym go through, they're, they're part of it. They're witnesses to how our gym grow, our team grow, our business grow. They probably don't think about that, but you know, they are. They're a huge part of South Coast Gymnastics. Um, Xiaoping is not here for the banquet because um, my father-in-law just passed away uh, a few days ago. Uh, Grandpa been lived with us for the, last, the 22 years, and yeah, we are the family for him. So we <clears throat> we do yeah, I was set, and then Xiaoping has to you know go back and take care of the things and 
and, and, and say goodbye to dad. And then I know that he's uh, sad that he couldn't make it to the banquet. He writes some email to me about the kids. Uh, it, it, I understand his meaning, but none of the sentences <laughs> doesn't make. So I know that he's just his mind is having too many things. But I think he feel bad that he could not be here to present the awards for the kids and to speak from his heart about his gymnast and I just wanted to say that Xiaoping is the coach that with less work but a lot of heart. He loves them. He actually know about um, my father-in-law's situation the first day uh, at National. But uh, I think he was decide, you know, I keep him update about what's going on, but he decide this is uh, the most important meet for most of the kids of the season. He just wanted to be able to pay full attention and uh, to the kids. But luckily, the kids did so well. The boys had their best meet. He keep texting me, cause you know, we have this thing. If we away, I'm at girls meet, he's at boys meet. And if I, the meets are, I know it's happening. And if he, I don't get anything and I know, whoops, it's probably didn't go too well. He doesn't want me to worry and share something. So we just don't ask, we so, well, I understand. Competition is competition. Results, it can happen any way. So at this time, and then he texts me and then just telling me how well the boys did, sending me the pictures through his iPhone, like they're on the stand, they're doing the podium training in the middle of the competition. And I feel, I'm just, I feel he must be having a good time and happy about the performance what boys put in him. Yeah, so four boys went to national and he's happy for every single one of them. It made him proud. And Timmy, of course, this is his third year become a national team member. And then we have a little one, uh, you know, at the meet in, in Sean for the first year at national, and it's a national, uh, you know, made it to the national team member. Taka, Pommel Horse, sixth place, top six at national. And Daniel and Xiaoping said it, he has the best meet of the season. So I think all of these made him feel great. For me, it's like uh, I paint a beautiful paint. And uh, like we build up a, a, a beautiful car, like a Mercedes or some sort of beautiful car. We have a chance to, from scratch, to build up all the way to, to the top and uh, make it the best out of them. Me and Xiaoping, we both reach the very top of the sports, which is the Olympic. We understand how hard to get there and to go on that route. It's not just working hard, you know, you say, I'm talented, I work hard, and then that's my dream and I get there. It's not that simple. And I think to go into the Olympic, it's just so many things play in the game, sometimes even luck. To get to that point, it's a pyramid. Only very few make us all the way to the top. And I say, yes, all of these are working hard, talented kids, and also lucky. Me and Xiaoping, we're lucky. We're the lucky ones. Because there's so many of us start at the same time. Some of my teammates might be more talented than me, working harder than me, whether either injury, other things happened. You know, I mean, there's just so many things, or family tragedies stop them, or there's just so many things burned out. You name it. It's so, all of these. Or at the last moment, the team feel that we are the choosing one, they're not them. That little bit of difference made us the Olympian and it's not them. So I do consider me, myself, and shopping for sure is the same. We feel we're the lucky ones. When I came to this country, I realized 
This is a different system than what we grow up. What we grow up is we get to put it in a training center with all other same age, you know, um, junior team, senior team. We have a lot of us. We ended up, it's like a big family work together. Everybody has the same goal. It's, it's that level of environment to produce and to do good, to make good results. But over here, that's not how it happens. Every kid has their family as a sing, single unit, right? They have their family supporting them through all these years. There are a lot of sacrifices from that. So when parents bring them to the gym, to begin with is having kids have fun. Then when it gets to the team, and they realize it's serious. But during this road to be success, we go through a lot. There's just a lot of things, tough times, of course. Those are tears and happiness, you know, young children has to go through. So me and Shopping, we were always thinking, besides gymnastics, besides produce them to become a great champion, besides they're great in this sport, what else we can give to them? So I would love to also teach them discipline, focus, commitment, learn how to fall and get up, have the ability to build fighting all kinds of problems like injury, a side of track from the other kids that they don't commit it to, certain things like Friday parties and this and that, you know, they, they, they're very focused and also teach them teamwork, set up a goal, and most like, most we want to teach them is work hard, never give up, and just work hard towards your goal. That is the only way you near success. Because to us, I think these are something that we can give to them so they can also benefit in their future. Okay, well, the basic philosophy of the South Coast Gymnastics is to participate and excel. Participate basically is everyone you know, enjoy gymnastics, like I tell all my students, our parents, and three years of gymnastics benefit for life. And uh, you, you participate definitely will be. This is one of the basic sports for all. And um, on top of this, the kids have a chance to excel and uh, which develop those talent, take the gymnastics to the next level. Hopefully they can successful in that, you know, in that dream or you know, whatever the dream is in, in, in gymnastics. Most of them grow up with us. And they're special because they're seriously almost like our own kids. I miss them, I miss their family, almost like I miss my own kids and my other family. They're very unique, that's what I said, they're very unique. Each one of them, their family, all very unique. Like how I have families driving from San Diego in, in, in Riverside. And to us that is, it just say a lot, it mean to us a lot. So I just wanted to tell the kids and their family, we miss them. And we wish the kids have a, you know, keep working hard, carry on from here, have a great college life and future, and to the family that we want to say that we wish them happy, healthy, and good luck. I think when kids telling us that they love us, when they're not little kids, when they're older, and they show they, they will miss us, I do believe from the bottom of my heart 
and then um, I do miss them. Um, not just they're my gymnasts. They're seriously my other kids. And with a big group like that, all together, imagine this kid has been with you over 10 years and see them every day. Like for example, that Sophie. Now, what she developed is that since she started driving, see I have this thing because when they start driving then I start worried about them because I don't, you know, I just, you know, they're teenage, just start driving. Not that I don't trust their skills of driving, that's too easy for them as a gymnast. But uh, the road experience and, you know, and they're young, and they rush sometimes, and not pay attention, so, you know, I would have worried just like how their parents worry. So, every kids walk out, I would say, um, drive safe. It's just the way that I say it. It's almost like I say I'm worried about you. Be safe. And then uh, Sophie ended up, if I don't tell her that, every time she walk out of here, she would say, Jaha, I was I coaching. In the middle of coaching, she was standing at the door, waving to me or even waiting for me to finish talking with the other kids coaching and say, what do you say? And I must say, drive safe, in order for her to go. And you tell me, I will miss to tell all these seniors that drive safe. When I go back to China, you know, I see my old teammates and they always ask me, um, you know, Jia, you, you actually had a chance to be the greatest coach in coaching champions if you stayed in the Chinese national team. And I, I said, I know, but I don't regret. Because I'll tell you what, um, what I know is what I gain. I, um, I got two kids <laughs> versus China. I love kids, so if I stayed in China, I can only have one. So I said I have two kids, and I have my own gym, and I learned another language. I um, learned another culture and lived with it. And most importantly is I got to meet and know and teach and have them live in my life with all these kids and a family. And I don't think any success could replace that. It's priceless. The experience of to get to this point is priceless. There's no way that I would have thinking that I go the other route of my life. I am happy. We never got twins before as a team, you know, walking in. I mean, you know, we got twins in the classes. But that's our first twin that coming together and then uh, trying to be a team member. These two are, there seems, very tight together. I like they, they show their love to each other, support each other. They would talk. And then if the one don't do good, the other one cries. Very honest kids. And they're hardworking kids. They work together kind of kids. And they're supporting and commitment. I think the biggest thing is a commitment. Make them who they are today. Focus is not just each day to a thing to focus on their trick. I mean focus to for what they're doing, which is gymnastics. And that's what they set their mind for, and their love for, and they focus for. They used to come to the gym on Saturday morning and cry for 15 minutes. And then it, it just standing on the beam and cried. So kind of after a while, we'll figure that out. It's a symbol as they're just probably not used to. You know, kids learn their body differently. They probably haven't fully wake up yet. 
it's, it, you know, after a while, that guy was just gone. But that really got me to don't yell at the kids when they cry because that might be nothing. It just has to get used to it. And when they will, then they just stop. That's how they begin when they start teaming. And another thing is these two twins, so they're very honest, very honest kids. But they're very easy to get distracted. When they're young at least, they're so easy to get distracted. I remember I used to making them do beam basic kicks. So I'll say, you know, they're working with a group, so it's not just two of them, a group of kids. So I say, let's do uh, five sets of uh, 30 on each leg. When they do their kicks, so they go, you know, 25, 26, 27. Right on that moment, something maybe happened in the gym, like a big noise maybe, anything. And they, or somebody was talking kind of near them. And then they lost counting. So what do they do? Start from one, one, two. So every set, okay, here goes 12, 13, bam, something happened. Then they go, they got distracted. And they get back before God was on 13. One, two, and that's what happened. My solution ended up is, and never mind, just keep going. I'm gonna correct you. When the other kid's done, you're done. That was the cutest thing to me. So I always know, oh my gosh, these kids. <laughs> yeah, they make me laugh. You know, at that time I'm thinking, oh, how cute. Amy is more bubbly, stronger personality. Allison, yeah, Allison's old sister, the older sister. She's more, you know, settled, doesn't go ups and downs that much. And she doesn't, you know, talk that much, she's more settled, like more in, keep it in. And Amy's more a little sassy. <laughs> yeah, that makes them different, but they always work together pretty good. They ended up going to the same school, and then, and you know, they both won, or they, I should say they both got a full ride, it just won Amy's on uh, pending. So it's either this first semester or next semester. No matter what, I see this one thing. I think, at least I believe, that they always have gymnastics in their heart. They got to do this. Sophie has uh, been with us the longest. She probably have 12 years with us. She's happy about what she's doing. She's loving what she usually hate, she used to hate. That's the best ending of gymnastics that I think South Coast and we can give it to her. So she can carry that on to her future. It's, it's a kid with a lot of honor. Yeah, since she's little, she wants to be good. And she's a talented, talented little kid. And then, you know, when she was young, uh, when she was level four, she's a standout. And I remember when she competes, she got a lot of attention. So one of these kids has a lot, a lot, a lot of potential. Very talented, but she's also the biggest chicken. She's starting to trust her body, trust herself, trust her mind. And most importantly is what she tells me is Ja. She tells me one day, I, I, I look at her, I can't not believe that's what she said. She said, Ja, I love beam. Oh my gosh, I love beam. And the last meet, the season, the last meet, and she competed, and she hit, you know, she made all the events. Every event she went down, and when she raised her hands, it doesn't seem like she's nervous and all that. It seems like, I love this. I'm just going to perform for myself, for my coaches, for my family. And that was the best meet of her. I think I can say, well, as a level 10, you know, her entire season. I, I'm just so happy for her, I think, yes, regardless you get in the medal, you're a champion or not, you made the best to prove yourself you can do this. You finally got it, you can do this. If you can do this, Sophie, you can do the other things in your life too. Because this is a challenge, this is not easy. And you learn to overcome all of these problems you fear and learn to love your fear and work through it, 
And that's what I'm talking about. I love to see that. And to the coaches, I think that's the biggest reward. I remember that when she was young, she won't let me hug her. You know, I thought, uh, you, you, you're happy, you're good, you did well. Sometimes I want to hug her at the end of the workout. And for some reason, no. So then I remember, I forgot it was either dad or mom told me, oh, don't mind, don't worry, and she doesn't hug us either. Or don't let us hug her, it's just her. It doesn't mean, so, you know, I, I got it. And it doesn't mean that she doesn't love us. It's just, that's just her thing. So, you know, during all these years, I think starting last season, it was just randomly one time we did well at the meet. And she came and ran over and gave me a hug. Yeah, it just, it reminds me that hug, it means so much. Yeah, it almost means more than to make her a champion. April, yes, she does have a lot of potential to be great. And I hope she realized that and developed from here and to do well on the other areas in her life. April started when she's very young too uh, with us. You know, amount of the whole group of kids, and you have to pick one kid. You say, I would love to work with that kid. It will be April when there is at such a young age. She's such an angel. She's never talked back, never mess around, never had a bad attitude. Always nice to our teammates. When the coaches give correction, just knock head and say yes. It kind of remind me of those traditional Chinese ways, you know, coaches say something, yes. She's one of these. She just needs to learn how to handle that pressure. How to gain the confidence. Of course that, you know, sometimes it takes kids really long, take us really long. Even finish gymnastics, you still can work on that. When they're very young, they probably don't care that much because they don't understand how important the winning at right on that moment yet. They're there to have fun, you know. So they're at that time they might go for it. They might. They might not focus, learn to focus. But sometimes you put so much pressure, not everybody else give you, it's just yourself. You put the heavy pressure on yourself and go, this is it, I all have, that's all I have. I better do good and then, same as workout. She does that on the workout too. When, you know, like, all you need is step up one more step to that level of trust. Yeah. And then you, you learn. It's, a, it's almost ability. It's ability. Because once you get it, and I think you, you mentally will process that again next time when you face a challenge or when you face a nerve breakdown. You would learn you know how. And then, you know, so we, we do that for all young children when they're facing problems like that. Try to teach them ability to learn how to face challenge. All of the gymnasts handle pressure pretty good compared to some of the kids don't do any sports because we all understand look sports is about winning or losing nobody want to lose even sometimes you know the kids all understand i don't want you know i, I don't work too hard but once i'm out there competing i'm gonna do really good i'm gonna put it everything um you know at that day but how we gonna uh work through the pressures is basically Number one is depending on the day and day and day workout. That's what you can base on to gain your confidence. If you can do nine out of 10, or if you can do it every day, that trick, you're most likely not gonna be too nervous at the meet. You're only nervous for the tricks that you're scared at home either, or you're not done enough, or you've never done it before. You're just hoping that it's just gonna do it at the me. Of course you're nervous. So day in, day in, day in, you know, every day is normal. That's what we call homework. Compared to the competition, workouts are homework. Do your homework. You will have less pressure. She still worked through a lot of 
hard times, tough times, stress times, she didn't quit. She still carried all that and try and try until this day. Kelly is being with us the shortest of this year's uh, graduate kids. Uh, she's coming from another gym. What I'm very happy is, yes, she have not been with us for long as, you know, compared to the other kids. But in the short time, we did experience a good success. She's silent, but she does have that toughness, you know, and she will do it. Sometimes when I watch her foot, when she lands on that beam, that bruise, it, it even hurts me. To get up there and do again? That need a lot of guts. I think she rises for the pressure. At least the last season, that's what it is. She prepared well. Last season, she prepared well. The workout was consistent. She was having a, a strong, confident walk into the season. So when, you know, when the competition season started, she sees the hard work pays off. She's actually performed in her three most important meets, which is state, state qualifies to regional, and regionals, regionals qualify to Western and Western. Each meet, she got better. When the competition levels raised, her performing increased too. She finished second place all around, which is that means she's the best in the half of the country. So the competition got tougher, and she's also performing better. The hard work should pay off at the season, in the competition. And that worked perfect last season. And it just shows her, I can see the confidence. She was fun, she was talk, she was in, you know, like encouraging the, the teammates, because then there's a regional team, and that's, you know, she's representing our region. We're region one, so she's representing that. And I remember those, like, those faces are just sparkle. It's, there's not much of nervous, it's just a moment of when I raise my hands, I'm concentrate. And that's the performance level that I would love to see every gymnast experience. You know, a lot of gymnasts don't even have a chance to experience, to experience such a season. And I think that's, that's fabulous because that's what I want her to remember. I'm not done with her yet either. I feel like, uh, give us a couple more years, we will we'll get it. We'll do even better. Timmy, I think, is Tim, Timmy is like uh, very special. That kid is very special. We don't, you, you know, I mean, he's almost like our kid. And this doesn't happen too often. You got a kid that they have to drive like over three hours, I say. Because we're in Irvine. You know, and then they're coming from a riverside. Every day. Saturday too, weekends. So in Timmy's story, we have to mention the family. Most of the family would just find somewhere near. And that is true because you also have all the kids, you have your business, you have life. It's a trust from the family and Timmy. I was just talking to Amy and then, um, Timmy's mom. I said, I'm so glad that Timmy finally won the national title on Palmer Horse. Because Palmer Horses Shell Pings, everybody say Palmer Horses Shell Pings event because that's what he has a title on the Olympic and the World Championships. So, um, you know, uh, and Timmy's every year, like, oh, we're almost there. And this is Timmy's last season. Yes, finally, he's first place on Palmer Horse. And I know how much that means to Shell Ping. I don't think it's just Palmer Horse. I think it's just because, you know, it's like, we've been working this. Finally. And it wasn't a gift. It's a solid three-day Palmer Horse and got Timmy the title. I know Xiaoping is happy. So I think that made him 
proud. It made him proud. And Timmy, of course, this is his third year become a national team member. Talk uh, pommel horse sixth place, top six, and national. He competed two seasons with us. This is actually the first season that is complete that, um, you know, did all the way went to national. And then not just that, you know, it made a strong event, made it to the final, and still finished sixth place on the pommel horse. So uh, that probably buy him a ticket to get to um, um, NCAAs, and that's what he want. We really wish we had a kid like this when they're younger. It just gave us more chance and more time to, to teach them more. I can't say better, but it might be different. Taka in the same situation with Timmy. Taka lives in San Diego. Taka also has a younger brother, is a level five with us too, Tomo. Tomo's only like seven, eight years old, eight years old, I believe. And then what mom will do is to buy them a train ticket. So they take, she drives them to the train station and they take a train to uh, Irvine or Santana. And then mom will manage to have some of our parents to go pick them up from the station. Like I know Amy did it, Susan did it, you know, Dinah, or maybe some other moms did it too. Help to, you know, so they can be here at the gym and work out. And then at nighttime, and the, the train leaves that, I remember used to be at 917. So yeah, a lot of parents was involved to helping that. And then when there's no one can do that, then me and Xiaoping or Sunny, we all, we, we, we all the drivers. And I love to, I have, you know, I'm like, yes, I'm glad that I can help. He said, I miss this whole gym, I miss my team, I miss this, I miss that, I miss the travel. It's a pressure to us. Not that I say pressure because they're giving us pressure, it's a pressure us to ourselves because you feel that, you know, we better make good plans, we make it good for these parents that trusting us, have hopes on us, and the kids. For me, it's like uh, I paint a beautiful paint, and uh, like we build up a, a, a beautiful car, like a Mercedes or some sort of beautiful car, we have a chance to, from scratch, to build up all the way to, to the top and uh, make it the best out of them.